Uh, I did notice something really cool a, a few seconds ago. In Streets of Rage 2 and 3, if you've been thrown as the player and hold up and tap uh, jump just before you would uh, you would hit the ground and get hurt, you'll land on your feet and not get hurt. But the cool thing is, I threw one of these women, who are obviously very acrobatic, when, these enemies, and she landed on her feet without getting hurt. So that was a very nice, uh, nice touch. You know what I mean? It makes sense, and it's kind of... It's cool and it keeps the game less repetitive if they make sure different enemies behave very differently and some enemies, like, you'll end up remembering some enemies, you can throw them and they're just going to get hurt, but other enemies you have to fight in a very different way to quickly dispatch them. So, like, that's one of the ways to really make sure your game does stay. So one thing is make your game not so long that it gets repetitive, but also obviously try to be as creative as possible and introduce new variants to the gameplay. Introduce new enemy behaviors and new fighting mechanics. And like, like I was mentioning in uh, in Metro Siege, the um, you can do the block and the counter attack. So eventually, enemies there will be enemies in later levels that can do the same thing. And then uh, bosses, you're going to end up learning. Um, like I was just talking to the programmer the other day. Eventually, I want it so every boss has at least one move that they're especially susceptible to a well-timed counterattack, and that'll do bonus damage and trigger a special animation. You know what I mean? Like, it's a similar thing to what we're doing in our other game we're working on, Damon Claw, where uh, we really want that very visceral, rewarding visual and audio feedback. Um, to really let you know you've figured something out, you're doing an especially effective thing against this enemy, especially in boss fights. So rewarding the player with like a custom animation where, oh good, I landed on my feet. Um, it just really keeps things interesting and fresh and uh, yeah, like I said, just keep mixing up behaviors. Have some enemies that move around quickly and are annoying and try to jab at you so you really have to do very different maneuvering and footwork just to get within range of the enemy and maybe those enemies you really need to move in fast with a, a jump kick or a uh, you know a high speed jab and then get in and grab them or you know all those kind of things really help if every enemy is just like oh you just line up with them and, and mash the attack button over and over again you know that's and there were a lot of games in this genre early on especially that uh, kind of fell in that situation because most of them were designed to be um what quarter eaters. how did you how did you flip out of the pit it just happens automatically when you fall oh in. okay okay basically if you still have energy life uh life bar life meter and haven't died you'll automatically jump back out of the pit yeah and, and it does like on the surface when you start playing it it does feel just like a rehash of two yeah. in a lot of ways like it doesn't even play that different i mean it's right. I would say the art is of the same caliber, yeah. you know? I think it's, it's a little better, but also, yeah. especially you had mentioned this before we started recording this video, in level one you just start in a very bland warehouse. They're not right. really establishing the scene of the city, there's no cool urban street with graffiti and litter and uh you know that this is not the this was an unintentional shameless plug of metro siege but like like most fighting games you start in kind of an urban street it sets the setting for the whole well, game we've only we've only been on like one street so far right like everywhere else it's been like these like look where is this place i mean yeah you, you know, just teleport uh, to different places i mean not that the continuity made a ton of sense in uh, streets of rage yeah. 2 you go to a park and inside a fun house because you know that actual aliens are there and then you're fighting like robots and some kind of monsters and jetpacks and <laughs> um well, and like, it become, yeah, oh yeah. this is so this is like a construction site bridge yeah. or is this like the, the bridge level sort of redo i guess yeah. i don't know uh, maybe that's what it is but, you know, and that's the thing, like, you get, with that repetitive thug thing, you know, like, you get some of these characters that look like they would have belonged in the nightclub, but not here, or vice versa, yeah. you know, it's, it starts feeling a little odd, yeah. you know, you're just like, yeah. 
why are these people hanging out here? <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. I really go on a big rant about themes and not right. kind of uh, wasting all of your range of uh, enemies and stuff like that in your first level or two. Uh, in our Let's Play video of, what is that, Rastan Saga 3? Right. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we, we talk about it. Extensive, they they went to the extreme, though. Like, that one's even more... Boy like, yeah. this, it kind of, you know, you, you expect, with yeah. it being Mega Drive, that you're not, you know, you're going to be seeing the same guys. Yeah, uh, over and, and over. in general, they're yeah. just all thugs, so... Right. The... The incentive to do specific themes, which m was much higher in that Rastian Saga 3 game, because we're talking about really, uh, like, you've got fish men, and, you, you know, you might have dragon men. That like, what you mentioned about Final Fight having more grounded sort of ideas, you know, for the yeah. content, uh, maybe that lends itself to why they felt the need to go a little more zany with this series, you know, because yeah. they were the direct competitor, you yeah. know, so, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of those things, like those kind of marketing and what is quality ideas that kind of took over, um, is everyone started thinking, and the marketing was, you judge the value of a game based on how long it takes you to beat the game the first time. So they started padding all kinds of games and making them monotonous. It's kind of like my continuous joke is, uh, you know, oh, the game takes 80 hours to play, but to beat. The, but you spend 70 of those 80 hours in the forest just grinding, killing, like, woodland creatures to build up your level or something. It's like, is that really value? You know what I mean? Whereas I would much rather play, like I said, a short game that stays very fun the whole time. And it's replay value to me that's, especially for an action game, that's so much more real value. And, and you know, games should be all about fun. And not about oh. bragging how many hours it takes to grind through a game. I kicked only you in that crowd. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was funny. Oh yeah, that's a nice nice touch. In this game, when you try to body slam one of the fat guys, uh, they're too heavy, so you just uh, you, you fall under their weight and you take damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, so don't throw these guys. And remember, like I said, that's the good way. That's the kind of creativity, I think, really keeps, uh, keeps the game interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's there was this idea. So there was this idea that the longer it takes to beat a game, the more quote unquote value. And then the other one is raw creativity for the sake of raw creativity. So the more outlandish, the better. And so people started not recognizing good creativity, like what I just explained. Like, oh, the the heavy guy. If you try to pick him up, you'll get hurt. That's great. That's actual. Uh, sensible creativity that lends to the gameplay and enriches the gameplay. Yeah, from a technical standpoint, uh, kind of in checklist mode, this game is an improvement on Streets of Rage 2. More moves, better graphics, more memory, more variety of enemies. But the more important thing, the fun factor and does it get boring, they, that's where they drop the ball. I feel like in the first game too, even though it does get a little weird with some of the environments you go to, yeah, it just felt like it had a more interesting progression of levels. This one, it yeah. it feels a little like they didn't bother to try as hard with the yeah. It, it's like places you were in. You it's know? like when you mentioned the elevator and you said, "Oh, this is like the enhanced version of the bridge level," right? right. Like what I thought you meant, and I think you did, is the bridge level from Streets of Rage 2. And that's what it feels like. It feels like they had a checklist of we've got to outdo all of these things that we've done. That's one of those worries that like I call that Christmas list game design. And it's easy to fall into. It's like um, one of the better examples of that, even though it's a masterpiece game, was uh, Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo. Brilliant game, but even it started to fall into that trap of Oh, we're gonna give you a million different items that you discover and different power. He grabbed the enemy, grabbed the power up. That was cool. I mean, the uh, health replenish, the oh, trash man. turkey. Yeah. So like, that's good creativity. I, I feel the same way. I think even in like Super Metroid, like you don't yeah. have to have all of the power ups to beat the game. Like, yeah, you could you could even beat it with like. You know, like 40% of that stuff yeah, or something. Yeah, but so, worse, worse than yeah. not needing it, it's the idea of 
you could either they started to become too similar to one another and then it becomes a mess of fishing through menus and going which one do or and then to make it even worse it's like oh you can combine different weapons with other different weapons or whatever and it'll make another variant weapon and it's like that's value and then no matter what the more you do that the less time the designers and playtesters have to really per perfect and make sure the features in the game are fun uh, if i find it i'll edit it in but it's like a big full screen pixel art portrait of axel and his face looks really weird there too i'll see if i can find it and splice that in but anyway, there it was. There was uh, there was Bare Knuckle 3, a, a, a uh, Streets of Rage 3. The quality of the game overall is very high. If you uh, if you know what to do, which is easy these days with like just like we did long plays and game facts and stuff like that, uh, the whole timer thing won't be so bad. Especially these days with save states and you can just retry a million times. Yeah, I, I think the theme to this video is uh, kind of inadvertently until now is that Christmas list syndrome. They felt like they had to outdo the past game in trivial ways. The plot has to be more crazy. The, you know what I mean? Like they put a lot of work into the technicality of the game, making sure that it technically is more impressive. There's like more bigger animated sprites, more, you know, things like that but not necessarily more fun. So even if you have a bigger team and a bigger budget and more time, the more of the development time is being spent on those kind of Christmas list-like things, the less time they can spend on really refining and perfecting the, what really matters, which is the gameplay. And in this case, I would say also, just like that Christmas list of, we've got to outdo it, the plot needs to be more, more needs to be at stake, just like Hollywood movie sequels, you know what I mean? And uh, I, th I think falling into that trap, which is kind of a combination marketing and just like, oh, we need to outdo it. Um, I think that's really what made the game suffer the most. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for uh, other videos. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description and we'll see you soon.